must be Linda Peterson. Thank you for being here with us this morning. And then also to the recipients of awards that we have um, on the stage with us today, and to members of the Rustenburg Alumni Committee, especially Ms. June Watson, who is standing in as acting chairperson for us. Where are you, that side? There we go. Special guests, our past learners. We are also privileged to have some of them joining us here virtually and online from around the world. Um, and this is being live broadcast to them. They were all sent a special link. So behave yourselves. And this will be available online shortly after in the next week or so. There will also be this will be have been recorded and available online for you. The staff of Rustenburg and all of our grade eight to twelve learners. So good to have you all here this morning. I'd also like to make a special word of welcome to the following past learners who, ha who are currently staff members at our school. So we have Ms. Perdison Norville from E79, and she's the school counselor. We have Ms. Jordan Tame from E11, who's the head of the media center. Ms. Saida Basadin, E13, science teacher and Ms. Chelsea Johnson, E10, who is the head of French. The program will then proceed um, as it appears on the screen as we go along. I'd just like to make one announcement to all of the past learners. You have one commitment to us this morning, and that is to attend the AGM after this event. So if you grab your tea and coffee, you'll proceed into the hall next door just for the short AGM um, to cast some votes and to be part of that process. So please do um, join us there. Okay, over to the music department. Thank you, Armand, Lucy, and Cassidy. Sadly, I would like to read an obituary. Um, it is a sadness that we heard of the passing of Miss Marianne Lennox, and that we share that she, who, she was a past staff member of Rustenburg for 38 years. 23 of those she was deputy principal at the school. 
She served under Ms. Thomas, Ms. McIntyre, Mrs. Von Blerk, and Dr. Fullard, all of whom speak very highly of her. Ms. Lennox was a first-class history teacher, well known for her passion, knowledge, and understanding of history and its consequences, and I understand also creating false archaeological dig sites. Widely read, her lessons were described as captivating. She made a positive impact on both her learners and the staff she variously coached and taught. She set high standards academically and was an exemplary role model to the next generation. Compassionate, fair, kind, Miss Lennox was a champion of the underdog. And after attending her memorial this week, I understand she was quite an intrepid traveler, but always seemed to come across some trouble on those travels. She passed away on the 27th of January, 2023. Her memory will forever live with us. May her soul rest in peace. Let's have a moment's silence for Mary. Thank you. Good morning. Many people play a part in the success of birthday celebrations. This would not be possible without the support of our past pupils of Rustenburg and the involvement of a number of our staff. Thank you to all the teachers and admin, grounds and cleaning staff who support us in so many ways and always act in the best interests of the school. They are an exceptional team and that we are so fortunate to have here at Rustenburg. Thank you you two to our learners who are assisting with today's arrangements from the various music groups to the school leaders. A special thanks to Ms. Asunlele Kotu, the RA coordinator for all the arrangements for today. This is her first big alumni event. To the alumni, your loyalty and commitment to the traditions of Rustenburg and your fond memories of your al alma mater are indicative of the fundamental ethos of the school. I hope that our celebrations today will be enjoyed with much nostalgia and fond memories of when you wore the uniform and attended the classes and extramural activities of your school, as well as being an opportunity to catch up with your old friends and excited about our future. Thank you. So there have been a few changes over the past three years. There's been a move to a vertical tutor system which creates a family feel um, in our tutor groups that are now no longer, no larger than 20 learners of mixed ages, giving opportunity for more personal growth and a sense of belonging for all our learners. This has resulted in a change of our house names with a big role being played by the RCL. Our houses are now named after five star constellations that can be seen from the Southern Hemisphere. Today gives us the opportunity of uniting the past with the present. And it is a privilege for us to have past staff and learners together with us today to celebrate our beautiful school, Rustenburg. We are also very grateful for the generous contribution of 300,000 Rand from our Alumni Association towards completing our newly refurbished science room. We've commenced the refurbishment of the next two life sciences rooms and would welcome any investment in our scientists' futures. The school history. In 1893, 
a group of people led by the Reverend B.P. Marchand decided that a school for girls was badly needed in Rondebosch and they obtained a transfer of a portion of the Rustenburg estate and on the 19th of January, 1894, classes began at what was known as Rondebosch Girls' School. The school opened with 76 pupils, including seven boarders and 11 boys. Despite the efforts of authorities to channel boys to the newly established Rondebosch Boys High School, kindergarten classes included boys into the 1940s, just as some girls attended the boys' school kindergarten classes. As early as 1921, there was discussion about a possible new site for the high school. It was evident that the school had outgrown the site on the main road, and that further expansion was inevitable. The move started on the 11th of July, 1932. It was acknowledged that the division of the school was essential, but it was envisaged that there would remain new parts of a whole, a younger and older sister of one family. Cut the slides, please be moved on. Thank you. Beautiful new buildings were erected and 311 pupils in standard seven to 10 moved to the new site, leaving behind 400 pupils in the junior school. During the decades before the political transformation of the early 1990s, admission to Rustenburg, as with other schools in South Africa, was limited to white learners. The school was a member of a group called the Open Schools Association, which lobbied for schools to be open to learners across the South African population. Towards the end of the 1980s, Rustenburg indicated to the department that it would welcome the opportunity to open our school if we were allowed to do so. During 1990, this permission was granted, and in January 1991, Rustenburg opened its doors to girls of all races and nationalities. Meanwhile, as the decade of the 1990s wore on, more and more diverse learners were enrolled at Rustenburg. The 2000s saw an increase in the technology available for teaching and a big change in the national school curriculum, which in itself brought different challenges to the school. While the facade of the rest of the school has been unchanged over the years, various new classrooms have been added, a dedicated music block built, attached to the hostel, and in 1971, the new school hall, incorporating the old camp hall, and a brand new foyer was opened. In 2014, a new mathematics and physical sciences building was opened, and a new AstroTurf hockey playing field inaugurated. The past few years have seen a raised consciousness in sustainability. As, as a school, we now recycle close to 100% of all our waste and we're self-sustaining as far as our water supply is concerned. We place a strong emphasis on technology and innovation in and outside the classroom and we strive to empower learners and prepare them for the future and its challenges ahead. Today, Rustenburg is ranked highly among the top 10 schools in the Western Cape, and there is no doubt that the foundations laid at the start have been the key to its success. while you were practicing this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mr. Chris, and I'm the head of music. So I would like to say to the alumni and our guests, we practiced a song for you this morning, and we are going to sing the song for you. The whole school is going to sing the song for you, and hopefully this is the start of a new tradition at our school, and you are very welcome to join us to sing with, but just know this one is for you. It's a What a Wonderful World. I'm sure you know it. This year is the year of positivity, so can I ask the whole school to please stand up.
Let us pray. Remember, Lord God, all those who brought us here who have gone out from this school. Keep in their hearts their years in this place. Accept and bless the school and use it in all things according to thy will. May thy presence be ever within its walls. May it stand always for that is true, noble, and lovely, and of good report. Grant that we and others may so gain from its life, that many may bless thee for the day when it was founded, and that its work may be extended and continued for the generations yet to come.
Today we have a special guest speaker. She is a talented creative in the contemporary sense in that she is truly creatively motivated. She's a writer, an art director, a conceptual thinker, and obsessed with making things where there was once nothing. It's that holistic approach that defines the best creators of this generation, and Aisha is bound to leave profound mark as her body of work grows. Aisha Capri has received multiple awards, such as the Gold Student Laurie, Integrated, Integrated Campaign in 2017, Student Laurie Award for Branding in 2018, and a Bronze Student Laurie Colorative Design Award in 2018. Aisha matriculated in 2014. Aisha represents the next generation of leaders in advertising in South Africa. She has the talent, disposition, and the desire to take it on. She is talented, hardworking young woman who works hard to achieve her best. Her talents have earned a number of awards in a very competitive, creative industry. She has also graduated cum laude from Vega Design School and has always tried to do her utmost best in all she does. Please welcome Aisha Capri. Could we go to my first slide of my presentation, please? <laughs> um, firstly, thank you, Rustenberg, for having me here today. Uh, it's a great honor to be speaking to you all. Um, just a disclaimer, if I accidentally swear, let's just pretend I didn't do that, okay? Um, we can go to the next slide, please. Um, <laughs> next slide, next slide. <laughs> Um, anyway, I was at Rustenburg since grade R, and I matriculated in 2014, so it's been a minute, it's been nine years since I roamed these halls. Um, I was really good at art, and I was pretty decent at writing, and I kind of translated all of that into a career in advertising. So what that means is I sit in front of my computer and I make ads the whole day. Um, I'm classically trained as an art director. So an art director is in charge of all the visual stuff. So that means I look at like what color the tomatoes are supposed to be on the burger. I um, do the typography, but I also write. So that means I write scripts, I write social media copy, I write a lot of social media copy. I also write headlines. Um, so not a lot of people can do both of those things. Traditionally, they're separate skill sets, they're separate jobs. So that's why the older people in my industry, they call me a slasher. But a slasher is a very morbid term, and personally, I don't identify with the slasher community. So um, I call myself a creative. I've worked for a lot of big clients in South Africa. Clients are really scary. I've worked for them, uh, big clients overseas as well. I've worked in Joburg, I've worked in London, I've worked in Amsterdam. Um, as you can see, I've made a Burger King billboard. That's the thing that says shoo, and it's got a burger. Um, I've designed a book for the Zeitz Museum. Most recently, I worked with Moonshild Sanelli. Moonshild Sanelli is like a rock star, and we did a GQ cover for her. So let's do the math. Moonshild has worked with Beyonce. So if um, Moonchild worked with Beyonce, and I worked with Moonchild. That means I worked with Beyonce indirectly. <laughs> yeah. Like the luminous biography uh, said earlier, I've won Luries for some of the, the things on screen here. And Luries are basically uh, just advertising, South African advertising Oscars. Luries are also like a really big party for ad people. It happens once a year. I would love to tell you what happens there, but if I did, I'd get dragged off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Advertising can be a very, very fun because there's lots of photo shoots, there's lots of free food, lots of free stuff, but it's also a very high pressure environment. Lots of late nights, lots of early mornings, um, it's a lot of meetings, a lot of people screaming in those meetings, and it's a lot of group work. So think about the group projects that you do and times that by 100. Um, each project that I do is uh, just one big group project that never ends. Um, <laughs> um, also, it's 
really difficult being a woman of color in my industry. Um, there's a, not a lot of us, and there is certainly not a lot of us in high-ranking positions. Like, try being straight out of varsity and convincing a room of 50-year-old white bullies or that your idea is a good idea. It's really quite traumatizing, but it does wonders for your character development. Um, so, I am no stranger to high-pressure environments, Rastenberg being one of them, but when, when I was here, I put myself under pressure to perform academically because I wasn't really an all-rounder. All I did was like draw and write and stuff. I wasn't the head of interact or prefect and God knows I didn't do sport. Can you imagine me running at a high speed? That's like really unfortunate for everyone involved. So. Um, Someone asked me, like, oh, did the pressure at Rustenburg help you in your working world? <sighs> Crippling anxiety aside, yes, um, Rustenburg did teach me a lot of self-discipline, very good time management skills, and my English and art teachers were excellent, so they, taught, they made sure my critical thinking skills were, like, top tier, and that has really benefited me in my industry. Um, so we can go to the next slide, please. So, the constant pressure kind of made me feel like I could never make a mistake. So, there was a lot of like unlearning, self-discovery, all of that jazz that I had to do when, when I left school. So, I did an internship in Amsterdam at a place called Kessels Kramer. Kessels Kramer was literally in a church, like, with nun, like nuns used to live there. There was a lot of ghosts there as well. I saw one. Um, <laughs> And my boss there, Eric, he taught me the most important thing, like embarrassing yourself, messing up, making mistakes, and making an absolute idiot of yourself is the best way to learn. And it's the best way to learn life lessons, and it's the best way to learn things about yourself. So now we go into the next slide. Um, here you can see an example of me making an idiot of myself, and um, with like, <laughs> Unlearning, there comes a lot of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, and I did a lot of that when I left school. Um, so I was still working for Cases Kramer, I was in London at the time, and there was an exhibition opening for one of our big clients. Um, the theme was Beasts of London. Um, and my boss bequeathed me this lobster suit, and then he told me, why don't you just go to this exhibition, this lobster suit? And I was like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> and I was really nervous, because everyone else pitched up there, and like, really, they were like in leopard print and zebra stripes and whatever, and I'm there with my claws and my like bobbly <laughs> dinguses, and, and I was nervous, because I was hot and sweaty in that thing. <sighs> But it turned out fine because there were like people queuing up to take photos with me. And you can see there, I ended up on the Instagram as well. And, and there were kids asking me if like uh, the, the claws were real and if I could pinch them. And that's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> then, um, but stepping out of my comfort zone really benefited me. Like I would have never done something like that like when I was 15. So my key message to you is don't take yourself too seriously because everyone around you certainly isn't paying too much attention to what you're doing. And you can have space to be a little bit silly, be a little bit goofy, because you can still be successful. You'll be surprised. I'm not telling you to dope your exams. Just be, have room to be a little bit silly. So that's all. Thank you. Cool. Bye. <laughs> Okay, at this point of the assembly, I have the privilege of inviting Ms. June Watson to hand over um, our Diamond Jubilee Bursaries um, for the top national senior certificate students um, over the last three years. Unfortunately, our winner from 2020 is unable to be here, but in absentia, Nika Hofmeyer who was here in 2020, achieved seven subject distinctions and an aggregate of 95.83%.
And this is the last year that she receives the award um, of the Diamond Jubilee Bursary because it's something that happens for three years consecutively. So congratulations to Nika in her absence. Erin Koo, E21, achieved seven subject distinctions and an aggregate of 96.5%. And this is the second year that she receives this award. So congratulations to her. And then this year, I'm sure it's not a surprise to any of you that the top achiever nationally and provincially who achieved an aggregate of 97.83% and seven subject distinctions, Kelly Prouse, congratulations. <laughs> It's then also the privilege of the Rustenburg alumni to hand over a bursary and this bursary is for 10,000 Rand towards her tertiary studies and this goes to Kim Joy Damun um, who is doing her, um, her postgraduate certificate in education at the University of Stellenbosch. So congratulations. <laughs> So congratulations to those four young people. <laughs> we then come to the presentation of the Palmer Meruit Award. And for those of you who aren't aware and forget, that is the school's motto. This is presented by the school to a past learner who has brought honor to Rustenburg. The Rustenburg Alumni Committee is responsible for the nomination of the recipient and welcomes nominations for possible contenders for this award from the Old Girl Network that stretches far and wide. Taken from the school motto, we have called the award the Palmer Meruit Award, loosely translated, she who has deserved the prize. I am very pleased to announce that the recipient of the seventh annual Palmer Meruit Award, presented by the school to a past learner who has brought honor to Rustenburg and is nominated by the Rustenburg alumni and selected by the school. The award goes to Aisha Capri. You did hear a bit about her, but she's an award-winning creative at the Grey Advertising, and she graduated cum laude from Vega School in 2017. She's worked everywhere, from a bookbinder in Woodstock to an ad agency in a church in Amsterdam. As a representative of the next generation of leaders in advertising, Aisha is currently a participant in the ACA Women in Leadership course. Aisha has received multiple awards, um, she has done some good work for multinational companies such as Burger King, Hunters, and a few notable consumer brands locally and internationally. Quite a nice combination, Hunters and a burger. <laughs> She's proven that one can be anything you put your mind to, irrespective of who you are and where you come from, and she has smashing green hair. Congratulations, Aisha.
Long service certificates are presented to members of the staff after 10, 15, 20, and 25 years of service to the school. We thank these members of staff for their contribution to Rustenburg and to the well-being of the learners in their care. Please would the following staff come forward to receive their certificate. 10 years of service to Rustenburg, Ms. Michelle Bakker. And we wish um, Miss B well as she will be leaving us this year. Also, 10 years of service to Rustenburg, Mr. Ali Ibrahim. Also receiving a 10-year certificate, Ms. Mungiswe Maketo. Another 10 year um, of loyal service goes to Miss Gloria Mulzani. Also, 10 years of service to Mr. Adrian Munich. And the last staff member receiving a 10-year certificate goes to Ms. Milani van Black. I think she's making lunch for the past pupils. And then there are five staff members receiving certificates for 15 years. And the first one goes to Ms. Norma Caesar. Ms. Michelle Haylitz also receives a 15-year certificate. The next certificate goes to Ms. Janine Myers. Ms. Maria Raynham also receives a 15 year certificate. <laughs> and then the last one we, will, we want to just acknowledge because it's his last year at Rustenburg, he will be retiring. 
and Mr. Nicholas has been a dedicated and committed member of the staff. He takes great pride in the beautiful surroundings and grounds and the neat setups for functions, and he also loves his tutor group. Thank you, Stephen, for all you have done. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to talk about the matric results of last year's matric group, our 2020-22 NSC results. Our congratulations go to every one of our 2022 matric learners for their achievements. And for the past pupils that are present, we had 165 candidates all of them passed, so we had a 100% pass rate, and 98,2% got bachelor's passes, which is the minimum requirement for entry to university studies. Among the 100, uh, of those 165 altogether, they managed to bag 647 subject distinctions, that is, subject symbols over 80%. 93 of them, 56%, got at least four or more subject distinctions. And 12 of the candidates actually got aggregates of 90% or more. The average learner for the grade was 77,29%, which is an exceptional B symbol. Yesterday at Leuenhof, Rustenberg was the recipient of a ministerial award for academic excellence. We were placed second in the province and performed as the top public school. Also announced yesterday at Leuenhof, and I'd like to her to come forward um, to be congratulated by Mr. Gates, Shelby LaRue was named as one of the top candidates in the province and received a ministerial award for excellent achievement across the province. Shelby attained an aggregate of 96%. Congratulations, Shelby. You already know that Kelly Prowse achieved an aggregate of 97,83%. Um, All her subjects were 95% or more. She got 100% for mathematics, 99% for physical sciences, 98% for English home language and life sciences, 97% for geography, and 95% for Afrikaans first additional language and life orientation. <laughs> so over the years, we've had learners in the top 20 in the province, and obviously Kelly, like Shelby, was also placed there. She was also announced yesterday as the top learner in mathematics and um, English home language in the province. But just when we thought it can't get any better, we've had learners in the top three positions nationally. Um, Kelly was announced, and you probably saw this in social media and on the news, she was announced as the joint top learner overall in the country and the top learner in the country in mathematics. So Kelly obviously has received that ministerial award for excellent achievement across the province as well yesterday. And we, I now call on Kelly. We really congratulate her on these amazing uh, um, success, successes in terms of her subjects, all the amazing results that she re received. It doesn't come without a lot of hard, hard work and consistency, 
but I call on Kelly now to receive the Marchand Dux Trophy awarded by the school, as well as a gift from us in recognition of her place as the top NEC candidate in the country. <laughs> Kelly. We are very grateful to our staff for all their hard work in preparing our learners for this outstanding set of results that we had last year that placed us in second place in the province and as the top public school. But we also have to thank the staff of around about 50, in excess of in fact of 50 different um, feeder primary schools who have laid the foundations for these excellent excellent results. So we appreciate you. We have some of those principals and past principals with us today, and we thank you for the foundations you've laid with our pupils that they can build on, and we wish them well in tertiary studies. Thank you. Now, before we go on to singing our wonderful school song, I would just once again like to remind past learners, because I'm sure you have selectively forgotten this on purpose, there is an AGM that you need to attend. <laughs> Will you please make sure that you do attend that um, once you've got your delicious cake and coffee outside. And yes, Charmian, there is decent coffee. Let's stand for our school song. Okay. 